Hey everyone, Leadspeed here. Yes, I am back. The new format has officially begun. And honestly, I would post a video probably sometime after it began. So this is it. My first video since the September 1st format has officially begun is gonna be gonna be with me playing the Tano Merlantian deck. Now you're gonna notice that there's a card or two in there that it's a bit that 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 seem odd that you probably really never seen, but Honestly, I'm that guy who just likes to try out all kinds of weird stuff, whether they're good or not, and heck, maybe I may find a very good underrated card along the way. In fact, in this video, I kind of want to talk about that actually. With the uh, the ban list for the TCG, like the one thing I really did like about the list, you know, besides all oh, the Dragon War babies got banned or whatever, even though Dragon War still got first place at YCS Toronto, despite, you know, how many people thought the deck was dead. Oh, yeah, despite all that. Like, what I like about the ban list is that, yeah, it did hurt that we lost some of our most essential cards. And I know one of my good buddies, uh, Jason, if, uh, if you're watching this, I, I do feel for you about that compulse, man, but... What's done is done by Konami, and we gotta move on, man. Like for for that one compulse we have in our decks, you know, we just gotta we just gotta press on. Do it for that compulse, man. Do it for that limited compulse that we have. Use that compulse with dignity, pride, etc. Anyways, there that's my random plug of the day. But what I like about the ban list though is that it's it's forcing people to like come up with or look for different cards or tech cards that maybe replace our staple cards. I think, you know, Solemn Judgment got banned, so, you know, and Monster Reborn got banned, so, you know, some people were talking about replacements for Monster Reborn, you know, like Call of the Haunted, Ribbon of Rebirth, and stuff like that. There was just, just like some weird stuff. Miracles Wake. There was like all this other weird text that people can use depending on their deck. Now, the fact that people are like scrambling around to find replacements for that card, it just goes to show that Monster Reborn, it was kind of like a privilege, if you will. A card that that every deck could use, that whether it wins you games or not, it was a very powerful card. It was a very classic card, a very nostalgic card, and it's gone. So, I mean, that doesn't really surprise me, but, you know... Now, you know, people are just finding ways to replace some of those cards. Now, when I was talking about how I was running some weird cards in this deck, well, th there's a couple of them in here, and I guess I can explain a couple of them, but I don't know if I can, like, really... I don't know if I can really justify running all of them in the deck, like, all these weird tags I'm running. I'm running, like, a couple of tags, and then stuff like uh, Aqua Spirit. This was kind of inspired by... Uh, I think it was on Konami's blog site where they were talking about tech of the weekend or something like that and a couple of things were brought up and one combo particularly was using Aqua Spirit. Now I don't know what the I don't know about any deck lists or whatever so I mean I just put it in the deck not really knowing about any deck list so that second place Mermel deck I have no idea what the deck list is and by the time this is up I probably would have already seen it, but I'm not going to go and look for it because I'm doing this commentary thing in Mabobber, even though it's kind of weird and people like it for some reason. Yeah. But anyways, for tech cards, though, I had like a few particular tech cards. One of them was Geomaster of the Ice Barrier. Now, people are probably going to, you know, associate Ice Barrier, you know, oh, Ice Barrier suck or whatever. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I've never played Ice Barrier, so I can't really say that for sure, but... I like this Ice Barrier monster a lot, GMS or the Ice Barrier, for a couple reasons, really. One, she is a tuner monster, that's good. She's water, that's good. She's level three, that's good. So that's really good. Three really good attributes. Water, level three, and a tuner. And that can be searched off of Abyss Pike. So yeah, there's actually quite a few things you can do. But what I like about this card is that not only does he serve as a level 3 tuner monster, much like a fish bork archer is in this deck, but they both kind of serve different purposes. Fish bork archer works in the graveyard. Geomaster works on any time on the field, basically once. So her effect basically reads that you discard one card and declare one attribute. This card cannot be selected as an attack target by monsters with that attribute. This effect can only be used once 
while discarded space upon the field. So what does that mean? That basically means once you use that effect, you're done. You can't do it again. And you can wear, declare any one attribute that you want. You can basically declare like water or something like that if you're playing against water or something like that. And they, your opponent's water monsters cannot attack her. And actually that creates a semi-lock. If she is the only monster you control, they basically cannot attack unless they have monsters that aren't water. So that's kind of cool, but I mean, I'm not really using her for that. I'm mainly using her as a discard outlet for my Atlanteans or Abyss Goon. Basically, being a tuner also allows you to pretty much go, oh, summon Geomancer with Ice Barrier, activate her effect, discard Abyss Goon, declare whatever attribute you like, then you activate Abyss Goon's effect, bring back something like Abyss Pike or Abyss Turge, and you can go for a Synchro Summon. You can summon Gun near a Black Rose. So she does open the level 7 plays pretty fast, and plus, you don't, unlike Fishbork Archer, you can trigger Atlantean effects right away. You don't have to put him in the graveyard for him to use his effect because with Fishbrook Archer, he's if he's in your graveyard and during either of your main phases, you discard a water monster and then you can special summon him. But the drawback is that he destroys every non-water monster you control at the beginning of the turn's battle phase. So you can't go for other synchros that aren't water because they're going to get destroyed at the beginning of the battle phase if you conduct your battle phase. So, he also opens level 7s, but he has to be in the graveyard, and you have to have no monsters. But with Geomancer, you can have any number of monsters you like, you, and you can easily search up on the deck with Abyss Pike, and stuff like that. You can even use Abyss Tears, get Abyss Pike, and then summon Abyss Pike, get um, Geomancer. So, you do have a few ways to get her out of the deck. Now, I only run one. I run one and one, one, one Geomancer and one Archer because they serve, they are level threes. They just serve different purposes though. So it just depends on what you're using them for. And it's just kind of a cool tech card that I was using that I don't think I've seen people use. Now, another tech, which I was running in this deck and actually that was in my sideboard, which I mean, you might see that later or whatever, but it's Abyss Soldier. Now I'm sure people know about Abyss Soldier, you know, he, you discard a water monster and then you target a card on the field and return it to the hand. I remember this fact was pretty damn good. And, you know, people kind of forgot about him. And, you know, it's it's understandable because it's not really a standard pick for a Mermaid Atlantean deck to run. But I kind of like it as a one of tech for now. I may run two. But the thing I like about this guy is that Compulse is at one. So we have another way to get rid of problematic monsters or spells and traps that we just need to get out of the way especially if we're trying to make pushes for game we can't do it if something like Drago Sacks on the way or Zen Mains or freaking actually we can't even target uh, Fortune Tune, uh, number 49 Fortune Tune he basically can't be targeted so that's basically out of the question but basically there's a lot of problem monsters that are annoying if you don't have like Compulse or something like that or Phoenix Chain or Breakthrough Skill and Abyss Soldier not only gets rid of the problem, but triggers your Atlantean effects or your Abyss Goon. So you can do quite a few different things with this guy. And the last tech I want to talk about, and this is my favorite tech in this deck, Aqua Mirror Cycle. Now, here's how Aqua Mirror Cycle works. Target one water monster you control and two water monsters in your graveyard. Shuffle the first target into the deck, and if you do, add the second targets to your hand. Now, it kind of works like Salvage in that it gets you two water monsters from the graveyard to your hand. What I like about this though is that the water monsters you can get back, it does not matter what level they are or how much attack they have, they, could, they just have to be water monsters. Now the downside is you have to have a water monster on the field already, which isn't hard, and you have to have two water monsters in the graveyard. Again, not that hard. The other weakness is it's that it's a trap card, so it's slower. And it could be locked up by Jinzo, Royal Decree, Trapstone, etc. Anything that locks out trap cards. But what I like about this card, or for something like Salvage, and I'm not saying replace Salvage with it. I'm, what I like about this is that you can use it in so many different ways. You can use it like kind of offensively and defensively. Like for example, offensively you can go like, if you summon Abyss Lind, for example, and they use bottomless trap hole what you could do is you could go activate aqua mirror cycle target your abyss lind and let's say you had a abyss uh, tias and a goon in the graveyard with an abyss lead in the grave or something like that 
you go bounce Lind back into your deck and then put the Abyss, Tias, and Goon back to your hand. Now, what's good about that is because what's good about that is that you can use Abyss Tias' effect, pitch Goon, summon Tias, get a search, then use Goon's effect to bring back like Megalo or Lead and go for rank seven. You're basically you're playing it pretty aggressively as well. You're baiting out stuff. You can chain, you know, save Lind, and she'll still be in your deck for when you use cards like Abyss Sphere. And because the levels don't matter, you can pretty much get like any two combo pieces you want. Now, again, it, the card isn't perfect, but I, I like this card a lot. It might be a good tech card that maybe Mermaid Atlantean players can look at and go, hey, this is not a bad one of or two of tech. I wouldn't recommend running three because it can clog and it's not always going to be live, but I think it's kind of a card that people don't even know about and it might be worth looking at. So. Yeah, that's kind of what I want to talk about for this video, and I might just wrap it up there because, you know, I went on a bit about the tech cards, and honestly, that's what I really like about the format. It's forcing us to look at different cards that maybe we've never seen or looked at before because of the ban list. So, I don't know, like, let me know what you guys think about that kind of stuff, and, you know, I'll, I'll talk to you guys later. So, peace out, guys.